building did not fit the building. Wow, look how close that is. We're uh, still working to find out if, who was on the bus, how many people may have had an escape from the bus, uh, if they did at all. But again, that just missed that science building on the UW Tacoma campus. We're uh, putting calls in to Pierce County Transit to see what they know. Also to uh, the University of Washington Tacoma campus. But uh, you can see a number of uh, rescuers or emergency personnel there on the scene. As you can see, that bus just missed that building. It's 11:20. Stormwatch coverage here on Cairo 7. As part of this, we are continuing to watch this camera at SeaTac Airport. And since we last looked at this about 10 minutes ago, you can see that the snow has let up a little bit. We have been in contact. With the airport, no major delays or cancellations to report so far. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you've been seriously injured, here is reason number two why you should call the Bernard Law Group. Our attorneys have recovered over $400 million for our injured clients. Call the Bernard Law Group at 1-800-INJURED for a free consultation. How do you say, welcome to the neighborhood? How do you say? Can you believe it's been 20 years since college? Malcolm says you're special like Borsan, a creamy, crumbly blend of real cheese and savory herbs. Borsan makes any moment more memorable. Even if you're saying, I'm gonna have the kids tonight. How do you say, Borsan? Next, Entertainment Tonight. Bristol, Kyle, Jennifer, the backstage tension, the conspiracy theory. Does Bristol have an unfair advantage? Plus, Kate Gosselin back on the ET stage. Our scheme with the star correspondent. Then, the good wife love triangle. Who is she going to shoot? There could be a fresh face that takes her away from both of them. And Mark Harmon's box. Dark secrets about NCIS. Next, ET. Tonight at 7 on Cairo 7. This is not a prescription. This is Norma, who's inundated with all the information coming at her concerning the Medicare Part D changes this year. So she went to her Walgreens pharmacist for guidance and a free personalized report that looks at her prescriptions and highlights easy ways for her to save. Because Norma prefers her painting to paperwork. See how much you can save. It's your free report today. Expertise. Find it everywhere. There's a Walgreens. Eleven twenty-two, Cairo 7 special report of a weather event as considerable snow moves across western Washington and probably the most dramatic picture that we've been able to bring you yet in our live coverage since we've been on the air at 4 o'clock this morning is this Pierce County bus incident. This is on the UW Tacoma campus and that bus you see right there barely missed the science building. Isn't that something to see? Uh, you know, you've heard over and over again how slippery it is out there. You can see from these pictures that there's snow and ice on the ground there, but this bus barely missed the science building at the UW Tacoma. Uh, we're working to try to get more information on who was on the bus, if uh, there were any passengers. We do know that the escape trap at the top of the, the door at the top of the bus is open. You can see rescuers there on the side. We're working to find out, you know, if anybody was on the bus uh, besides the bus driver. Our Rick Price is racing to the scene right now. He is a photographer. As soon as they get there, they'll be able to give us some a little more information on the ground from everything that's happening here. Unfortunately, we can't tell you if anyone was on this bus. We're working to get that information just as soon as we can. We do know that this bus missed. It missed the science building on the UW Tacoma campus. We've been telling you about the schools that are closed today and the schools that are deciding to close early. We're scrolling through those at the bottom of your screen and I've noticed there have been a lot more of the college campuses, the community college campuses, that have decided to close early today and just cancel their classes. Also, a lot of the other public school districts and private schools are closing early because of the weather situation, because the Sam are just been telling us we have all this snow out here now, and we have all these problems on the roads, and things are getting even colder. Shoreline School District just scrolled through the school district itself, itself, not community college, but Shoreline Schools are going to be dismissing early. Lots of superintendents watching these weather conditions change moment by moment outside, and then when you factor in the idea that it is only going to get colder and only going to get windier, and you can see why these decisions are being made to try and get the kids home early. Look at this. This is State Route 16, Coma Narrows Bridge. 
Now the snow's let up in this particular picture, but you can see the backup has not let up. There are several vehicles sitting alongside the road. Let's go to uh, Sam Rogier, who has the latest on what's happening with all of the weather and how the worst may be yet to come, Sam. No, absolutely, Julie. You guys said it right. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet with this storm. In fact, things will get a little hairier as we head into the afternoon hours. Not only looking at more snow, but heavy but strong wind is looking to pick up this afternoon. It's specifically through some areas that are covering just a sack, and also getting colder in the coming uh, hours. So looking at Storm Tracker, still very active outside. Tacoma and Olympia getting a break right now. The snow was steady over the last two hours, so still a lot on the road. Downtown Seattle seeing persistent snowfall. This stretches over to Bellevue, up to Kirkland right now, and this is moving farther to the north. So areas like Kenmore, you're going to see it next. We've been timing it out throughout the morning since 4 a.m. 1135 Kenmore, Bothell, 1139 Mill Creek, 1154, increasing snow for your neighborhood. Want to tilt the view and take a look at Salamis County. North of Beverly has some light snow. We've got a couple calls into our newsroom from Whitby Island. It's coming down around Whitby Island, also to the north end of the Lippitt Peninsula. Port Townsend to swim. Areas like Port, uh, Port Angeles seeing the heavy snow. And this is slowly inching farther north. The San Juan Island getting hammered with heavy snow. And that port is just, even just on the cusp of the snow band. Uh, you've seen some flakes, but a few more, 1141. And Bellingham has seen a few snow showers as well, along with frigid temperatures outside through the morning hours. Now, winter storm warning for the areas outlined in red. This includes Salmish County through King County, Pierce County, Thurston County, and over the Kitsap Peninsula, also in the north end of the Olympic Peninsula. This is through 10 o'clock tonight. Two to six inches of new snow accumulating, and uh, we're looking at the wind picking up as well, heading into the afternoon hours. So the situation, uh, not letting up at all. SeaTac Airport Live right now. So it's actually let up a little bit. That fan that's over downtown Seattle was over SeaTac about 20 minutes ago, and yeah, this is what I'm talking about around Seattle. Look at the heavy snow coming down. You can barely make out uh, the base of Queen Anne Hill. This is our tower camera in HD, high top Queen Anne. Downtown Seattle on the heavy snow right now, 28 degrees. East wind at 5 miles per hour. We will keep it cold enough for snow throughout the rest of today. So widespread 20s around the south, 33 Olympia, 30 in Forks, 24 of Bellingham. And we've been pointing this out through the morning. The wind in Bellingham at 23 bring us a wind chill. This is what it feels like. The combination of the wind and the actual temperature feels like 9 degrees in Bellingham, 19 Everett. Wind chill at 23 degrees in Seattle. And the wind will pick up through the afternoon. With a high wind warning, areas of red, San Juan Island, Whatcom County. This is through 4 a.m. tomorrow. Gusts up to 60. So with wind like that, we could see down trees. Our friends in Whatcom County, if you're watching us right now, prepare for possible loss of power heading into the afternoon and evening. With temperatures getting down into the teens tonight, you're, want, you're going to want to be prepared in case you do lose lose power and you don't have heat tonight. Uh, be prepared for that. Around Skagit County, Whitby Island, northeast of the Peninsula, uh, wind advisory, gusts 40 to 50. Rest of the sound, no wind advisory, but it will be gusty at times. It's just in that 20 to 30 mile per hour range. Satellite image, area of low pressure, it has been slowly moving south through the morning. In fact, it'll be moving over our area this afternoon. So that's why we're looking at increased snow. And as that low moves south of us, yeah, we're going to get that reinforcing shot of cold air blowing into western Washington. And it's going to get very gusty this afternoon. So here's our latest computer models. This just came in. This update for our new newscast is coming up. But I want to give you guys a sneak peek at it as these uh, models get closer to the event. As we start seeing the storm develop, these models pick up a lot better on how much snow we're looking at. And the new model, a lot more active with snowfall through the afternoon hours. You can follow along with the top left-hand corner of the screen. 1 p.m., widespread snow continues through 7 p.m. tonight. It's going to be persistent ever southward. Even until later on, 11 o'clock, another band looking to develop over ever in Seattle. So when I say it, we're not done. We're not done. We're looking at more snow through the afternoon hours. Not until we get into early tomorrow morning, the snow will let up. We'll get a dry break tomorrow, but the coldest air is still to come. That starts rolling in tonight and tomorrow. So the breakdown looks like this. Down to 20 degrees tonight. Tomorrow, dry day. We'll actually get some sunshine, but the high temperature only going to 30 degrees. So a lot of ice will be around tomorrow. Down to 19 degrees Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday, we have a warm front moving in. It's going to move more moisture over us. But the, here's the drill. The cold air will still be in place. So we're looking to start things out of snow on Wednesday before turning over to rain, 36 degrees the high. And then finally, by the holiday, Thanksgiving, we are looking at plain rain. And showers will continue with mid-to-low 40s through the upcoming weekend. We're going to keep an eye on those winds because they will be the big story heading into the afternoon hours. We'll keep you updated with weather throughout the morning and afternoon. But first, get over to Jenny. She's been really busy in the traffic center, getting you the best routes to your destination. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Usually it's to get you to work in the morning. We plan your commute for you so you can be stress-free. I bet I have a feeling a lot of you at work watching this trying to get home or your loved ones at work and you're going to call them up.
I-5 here, as you go through the SeaTac area, we have a truck that just spun off off the off-ramp here. So if you're getting on an off-ramp, they're still extremely slick in several places. We have new alerts coming up all the time. Then going out to State Route 99, the First Avenue South Bridge, I wanted to show you this one because we looked at this camera about 20 minutes ago and it actually looks pretty good. But as Sam said, that snow has now come in and it's sticking on the roadways if you're commuting from the airport through to downtown Seattle or maybe south end of West Seattle. You're in and getting on State Route 99. That's how your conditions are right now. Once you get downtown, we are seeing the flakes again. Look at this. Pulling through the I-5 at Holgate Street camera. Volumes aren't too bad, though, as you go through this area. Now, the big trouble spot, that's down in Pierce County. So we have Trooper Brandy Kessler on the phone with us right now. And Trooper Kessler, what do you want the people to know about right now? Hi, Jenny. Yes, uh, State Route 16 right now is, is probably the worst, I'd say, between Tacoma and Dick Harbor. We have a just nice semi blocking the road. There's several crashes happening in that area, cars in the ditch. And so if they can avoid that area if possible, that would that would be best for that area. Um, and just reminding motorists to slow down and keep plenty of space between the car in front of you, you and the car in front of you. And uh, light braking, that seems to be a big issue out here. People are hitting their brakes hard and sliding into the other person. So keep lots of space. And then when you do have to brake, make sure you're tapping the brakes and braking lightly. And, and make sure you're ready for winter. Yeah, that's your tires. <laughs> have a warm clothes with you as well. I think people walking outside of their cars, what do you want to tell them if, if you do get stuck on these icy conditions? If you do get stuck, first of all, make sure that you do have a winter car kit ready in your car. So if you do have to stop and uh, sit and you're stranded, that you have food and water in, in your car. But definitely do not get out of your car. That's the most dangerous thing you can do is get out of the car. So stay in the car, wait for help to arrive. Make sure you have a phone on you, even if it's just a, an emergency phone, so you can call 911 if you need to. If you're not one that carries a cell phone, make sure you have that. And to the Kessler, your troopers are out there covering all of the roads driving while we don't have the DOT cameras. What are they telling you? I'm sorry, what was that again? Your troopers that are out there driving these roads, State Route 512, State Route 7, are they reporting back to you on the conditions there? Yes. Now, 512 is actually is looking a lot better. It's wet and slushy. We don't see any ice on the roadway, and it's not snowing right now in this area. Uh, 16 is just one that you need to watch out for that's really bad right now. And I'm noticing the volume is increasing. Are you thinking that people just trying to leave work to get home now? Absolutely. I think people are trying to get home. Uh, you know, this is the first snow of the year, too, so people aren't used to it, and so I think they're just being a little anxious to get home and get where it's safe, which is a good idea right now, I think. And tomorrow, especially when the ice comes, uh, people need to be aware of the icy roadways and be ready for that. Thanks so much, and you and I will keep in constant communication, and I'll get out to the viewers everything they need to know. Thanks for being with us. Okay, thanks, Jenny. And the time right now is 11.32. Live picture for you at Green Lake, where the snow is falling down right now. And it has pretty much been snowing throughout the morning here. Just getting word not too far from Green Lake. The Woodland Park Zoo will be closing at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And Point Defiant Zoo also will be closing early today because of, yeah, you guessed it, the heavy snowfall. As you can see from the school information at the bottom of the screen, more and more of these schools are deciding to close early today because of the conditions and also because of concern about how concerns about how cold it's going to get later today and that things could get even more icy a little bit later today. That's a pretty picture from Green Lake if you don't have to go out in it. So if you don't have to stay with us here on Tyler 7, here's a look at I-5 at Northeast 45th Street. As you can see, the flakes are falling once again. Things have started up once again with the snow. The south town, again, is just getting hammered, as we've been showing you. But even downtown Seattle is seeing a lot. Yeah, here's in the Tacoma area. Look at that truck on the side, another truck on the side of the road as well. This is a new incident that we wanted to show you. We are hearing over and over again how slippery it's getting out there. We know that they put the de-icer down overnight. We know they've been trying to get out to scrape the roads and to use the salt as well. But in the South Sound, they have just really been hit. Um, look at this. We have more snow falling here at I-5 and South Holgate Street in the Seattle area as well. Also, we have that situation on the U.S. Tacoma campus where we have a bus on its side that narrowly missed hitting the science building there. This, look at this. This is a still picture that we got of this. Uh, we're working to get more information. You can see the rescuers there on the side of the bus there, but look at how close it got to that building. Speaking of new information, Rick Price has just arrived on the scene of this particular incident. Rick, we've been able to, unable to tell if anyone was hurt in this. What, what's happening there? 
I can tell you that uh, there were some people on the bus and uh, that uh, some of those people are being transported at least for uh, precautionary reasons. There are some minor injuries that we're aware of. Uh, at this point in time, uh, the uh, public information officer, the fire department, uh, describes those injuries to me as non life threatening, non life threatening. Uh, what happened was the bus was apparently coming down Jefferson, which is a very steep hill. Uh, hit a uh, icy slippery patch uh, at the bottom of the street skip on that side of the road. It was trying to make the turn, the sort of the left turn onto uh, Jefferson from 19th. And I just took myself earlier, the hill is on 19th. So from the hill going down 19th, trying to make the turn to 